Welcome to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast with your host, Coach Kramer. This is episode 33, Picking and Sticking to One Thing. Hey, smart humans, welcome to number three in this series on smart people problems, things that are challenging, especially for humans with smart minds. And in the previous episodes, we looked at smart shaming and bore out. And today's topic is actually a nice follow up to bore out because we're looking at the challenge of picking and sticking to the one thing. <laughs> So many people have asked me to do a podcast on being a multi-passionate or multi-potentialate and how to deal with it. Well, here it is. And listen, I get it, right? I get that you have the question. I have been wondering for so much of my life, like when will I finally find the thing? When When will I be able to stick to one career or even one degree? I studied so many different subjects. I I have finished one degree. I'm a legit philosopher, but I have unfinished degrees in music theory, in mathematics, and in English literature, right? And I've worked in politics. I've worked as a paralegal in trademark law. I've worked in real estate. I mean, I've done the craziest stuff. I mean, I've typed my way through college, learned some very interesting things that way. I've built a business around photography, visual marketing, all the things. I have done a lot. Right? So for a long time, I kept asking myself like, okay, you know, when are you going to stop playing around? When are you going to start sticking to one thing? Well, the answer is the question is wrong, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's just a sneak preview. So how do you pick a career or a subject or even a niche when basically with your smart mind and capabilities, there are an infinite number of things you could be doing? And this question stresses out smart humans in all phases of life, right? I talk to students worrying about whether they've picked the right degree and what would be the best next career step for them once they graduate. I coach business owners who spend countless sleepless nights worrying about their target audience or rebranding or positioning. I work with people in successful careers who wonder whether it is possible to keep things interesting or should they pivot without, you know, to a different career without losing everything they have. And underneath all of this suffering, anguish, stress, lies this very simple assumption. Humans should pick and stick to one thing. If you don't, you lose at the game of life. You'll be unemployable. You'll never be successful. No one will hire you. You won't be able to explain your crazy CV and so on and so forth. This is what we're actually told from a very young age. A jack of all trades is a master of none. Or the fun Dutch version, which goes something like 12 crafts, 13 accidents. (laughs) So good, right? And sometimes we're told this by well-meaning parents and teachers and sometimes by not so well-meaning peers, managers or recruiters. Basically, their agenda for you is to adjust yourself to what they consider to be normal. And we all tend to buy into these stories. I did too, right? Especially because they've been drilled into us and are still so pervasive. But what if it simply isn't true? (laughs) What if you, especially in this day and age, can have your multi-passionate cake and eat it? What if actually the unedited version of a jack-of-all-trades applies to you? A jack-of-all-trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. Because there's definitely a place in the world for Smith's army knives in addition to all those single purpose knives, right? You can actually be, do 
work at a lot of different things and still have an amazing career and life and be successful. So that is my message to you today. And it's more than just an opinion. It is actually underpinned by research. Huh. I love me some research. Because it turns out that, for example, the people who get predictions wrong most often in the media are hyper-specialists. And the people who people who get hired most as executives are generalists. I actually learned this fun fact and many more from David Epstein's excellent book, Range, How Generalists Triumph in a Specialized World, which I highly recommend you read, if only for all the incredibly fun and inspiring stories of how smart, multi-talented people throughout the ages achieve success. And David If you're listening to this, I can't wait to have you on the podcast. So people who don't restrict themselves to one discipline actually tend to come up with the most amazing and innovative solutions, right? They may actually be able to connect something from, I don't know, maybe they're into knitting, right? And at the same time, they're working in chemistry and are trying to figure out some problem with molecules and something they know from knitting actually helps them create something insanely new because they connect it with chemistry. And no, you know, the generalists are probably not the best hires if you want more of the same, if you want predictability, if you want stability. But if you want innovation, creativity, change, outside-the-box thinking, get the generalists, right? Okay. Now, maybe your brain is still objecting. Maybe it's saying something like, if my CV looks like Swiss cheese, no one is going to hire me. If I just follow my passion, I'll never make money. Or even something like, if I keep changing direction, I'll never really master anything. So let's get some perspective here. What's really going on? Yes, You could have an interview with an HR person or manager who doesn't know how to read your CV. Maybe you have to help them by finding the red thread that's relevant to them, by telling the stories that show you are perfectly cut out for the job you're applying for. And you have the perfect brain to do that. And maybe if you keep changing direction, you'll never master the subjects you're leaving behind, but maybe you're mastering something else, right? Maybe maybe you're mastering being a generalist and having an amazing life. And that is seriously the best thing to master. And will doing this exclude you from certain professions? Yes, of course. But if you really wanted to be an extreme specialist deep down inside, you probably would have become one by now, right? So if there's this, ugh, Feeling like whenever you think, okay, maybe I should, you know, become, I don't know, a surgeon, a brain surgeon, or maybe I should study law and be, I don't know, some kind of legal specialist. And your entire body is like, oh, just the idea of studying the same thing for so many years is such a massive turnoff. Then, you know, that is just not what you want. So... Maybe you really don't have to solve for the question, what one thing should you choose to do? What thing should you devote yourself to? Maybe you don't have to pick and stick to one thing. And maybe you just need to stop listening to the opinions of people who don't have a brain like yours on what you should do with your life. And that might be a bit scary because you could try and do it your way and fail. And people could then say, Ha! I told you so. (laughs) They might. They maybe will. (laughs) But what's the alternative? You can do it their way and be miserable. Which sucks. It's simply not good enough. If you're still doubting this, check out the previous episode on Bore Out. That should help. So knowing this, right? Knowing that if you desire to do lots of different things, but think you shouldn't, how do you then adult how do you build a life where you can have the things you want to need right like stuff food a roof and do things you love 
if it's not through picking one thing. Okay, you ready? This is my secret formula for everything, including building a very successful business. You try shit, you evaluate, you tweak, you try some more, you evaluate again, you tweak some more, and so on. Forever and ever. It really is just like building a business. You are designing, crafting a masterpiece, right? A life and livelihood that works with your specific unique brain. It is okay for that to take time. It is to be expected. You are not going to solve this tomorrow, right? It's a big, important thing. It's a, it is a masterpiece. So give yourself that time, right? Allow for it. Do not expect it to be done in a day, a week, a year. And also, you want to be careful of long-term visions that blind you to what is possible for you in the here and now. I see this a lot, right, with the smart people I work with. Because we love to think that we can predict the future, but we're actually crap at it, right? We're good at projecting from the past, but we're very bad at predicting the future. And by the way, if you think you're good at it, let's go play the stock market together. So, sure, you want to have a crazy, fun, long-term goal, right? It's always good to have something on the horizon, like friendly world domination or being able to buy all the Lego you could ever want and having room to display it and play for it, play with it. Or building and growing a fun business, inventing something insanely useful that makes you a multimillionaire so that you can invent even more insanely useful stuff, whatever it is for you. But because these goals are big, our brain actually has a hard time seeing the steps to get there, which makes sense because we have no idea how we're going to get there right now. And then an unmanaged mind could conclude, well, this is never going to work. I better pick something sensible and predictable to do, right? And this is where you sign up for, I don't know, the accounting course, whatever it is that is sensible, predictable in your world. So you want to start thinking about this differently. You want to ask yourself, what can I start doing today, this week, this month, this quarter, that would be at least one of these things? A, immensely enjoyable. B, educational. C, profitable. And D, fulfilling. That is how you build a career and a life, by starting with the now and finding what aligns with you and your desires and your wants and needs most. So instead of dismissing invitations, opportunities, etc. as not a good idea because you can't yet see how they fit in with your long-term goals, get curious instead. Does it sound exciting? Does it tickle you? Can you say yes without going bankrupt or having your children taken away? Then why not do it? And this will actually teach you one of the most important skills that you need to craft a life that works with your smart mind. And that is flexibility. It's the ability to improvise, to make the most of what you've got to work with. And it's something that tends to suit humans with smart minds extremely well because they love to solve extremely difficult puzzles. And this, by the way, reminds me of how I ended up on a very big stage in Madrid in front of a thousand Honeywell employees with the CEO of Honeywell, explaining him how to take a selfie (laughs) and teaching everyone to take their first selfie. I mean, I could never, ever have designed the path that led to this insane moment many years ago. But it was so many, you know, points of saying yes, saying yes to the idea of, oh, I should start teaching smartphone photography, even though no one's doing it, because I think this is the future. Okay, yes, right? I should start teaching it online using social media, even though no one's doing it. Maybe it's an insane idea, but it sounds so much fun. Let's do it, right? Oh, the media are crawling, right? Am I willing to come on TV and radio to talk about this 
crazy online challenge that thousands of people has signed up for and now they're all taking selfies. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 right. So start doing things that feel so good to do and that can actually lead to that amazing goal you have for the long term. You just don't know how and that is a good thing, right? Because the journey is going to be so much fun. So create some fun puzzles for yourself with regards to your life, right? What really works with me, right? Works for me right now in, in my current circumstances. What can I go do? And then solve those puzzles. Start a side hustle. And Chris Gilbo has an insane amount of material on this. Check out his podcast. Go volunteer. Or say yes to a position that sounds thrilling, but is not at all what you thought you'd be doing at this stage of life. Maybe. Okay, that's all very inspirational, right? But what about the money? <laughs> you may say that's all very well, but I have a mortgage to pay. I can't just say yes to fun things. I'm kind of stuck here. I'm working a 60-hour week. Not a lot of room for a side hustle. If that's you... I have three questions. Number one, do you like your job? If, even if you don't like all of it, if you don't like the hours, etc. Do you like the company, the people? If so, you can totally redesign it so that it energizes rather than exhausts you. And I'm an expert at doing that, so hop on a call with me to discuss. If the answer is no, I do not like my job, are you willing to take a temporary hit in income to have a better life? I'm not saying that's going to be necessary, but just in case, is that a price you're willing to pay? And if the answer is still no, mortgage, hello, <laughs> then you just have to be a bit more restricted and creative in your first experiments. As in, maybe your first priority should be to find a similar job with better conditions so you can recharge, regroup, refine yourself, and then think about next steps outside your job. In all other cases, right, if you don't have the mortgage or if you can pay it, <laughs> if you don't feel stuck, stop thinking about it so much. Get cracking. Ask yourself, what do I feel like doing? And listen to the answer to that question. Because you always know deep down inside. You just need to learn to trust the answer and to trust yourself to run with it. But if anyone is equipped to create what you, in your heart of heart, want to create, it's you. So start dreaming, desiring, and then doing all the things. Not all at the same time, of course. That would just result in burnout. This year, as I'm building up the podcast, I'm not giving myself a lot of time to create art, for example. But I still play with paint almost every day. I just put zero judgment and demand on my output. As a result, I'm having a shit ton of fun and still learning new things about color, contrast, layering every single day with zero pressure. So something like that could be a first step for you. If there's something you'd love to pursue, start low key. Take a couple of classes, start mingling with people who do that thing, play around and then see where that takes you with an open, curious, non-judgmental mind. And there is one more inner question we need to address. It's a really <laughs> mean one, is this one. How do I know I'm not flaky? I mean, it's all very well to, you know, just follow whatever it is you want to do, follow your desire. But how do I know starting something new yet again isn't a cop out because the current thing is getting too hard? And that is a valid question because many smart people have never learned to do hard things, right? Because everything tends to come so easy to us. But there's a very simple solution to figuring this out. All you need to ask is how does it feel? Because if you know how it feels, you have your answer. It's a difference between running away from a scary thing versus running towards something or someone you love. They're very different feelings. So if you're running away from a hard thing, stop running so you can figure out why it's hard and scary and learn how to do it anyway, 
before you hop on to doing something else. But if you're running towards something you love and not running away, keep running. Have a beautiful week. Bye-bye.